So we've seen what causes market failure, but really what we want to understand is what does the government do about market failure? So whenever a market isn't doing its job, how does the government step in? Well, oftentimes what they try to do is the government sees this market failure and they try to step in and correct the failure to adjust for that efficiency or that deadweight loss. So we talk about goods being either overproduced or underproduced. They're trying to bring us back to an efficient point of production. So how do they adjust for some of these? Well, let's think about the idea of too few public goods. We said that a lot of public goods like roads, parks, defense, fire, police, all those things, there's no incentive for private businesses to do that because they're, again, non-excludable and non-rival. It's people have incentive to free ride. And, um, and because of that, because of the free rider problem, the government is left to pay for it. And so what they do is they collect taxes. And taxes, the government then uses that money to provide those goods and services to the public. So too few public goods mean, means that there's a massive shortage that creates a lot of efficiency or deadweight loss. And if the government then provides these, these goods that were previously not produced or underproduced, it helps prevent that market failure. It moves us closer to the optimal amount. Now, we obviously know that the government doesn't still create an optimal amount. We would all love more taxes. We would all love more national defense. We'd all love more. Sorry, I shouldn't have said we would love more taxes. We wouldn't. We want more parks. We want more roads, better roads. We want more national defense. We want all the things. But at the same time, the government doesn't always have the incentive to produce even more of it. So we might get closer to our equilibrium, but not exactly to our equilibrium. Now, what does the government do about that whole thing about market control with monopolists and oligopolists? Well, for one, they pass a lot of restrictive legislation. Maybe you've talked about in your U.S. history class, like Sherman Antitrust, Clayton Antitrust. We talked about the creation of those in the, in the FTC as well. Taxation. Sometimes the government imposes tax taxes on monopolies or oligopolists to force prices back to efficient levels. And sometimes they also set price controls. Those can be price caps, price ceilings, in order to prevent the monopoly from abusing the market. And so what we see, all of these are attempts, again, to prevent or reduce that deadweight loss. We want to eliminate the market failure, reallocate resources in a way that moves us back to our equilibrium and that efficient point. Now, finally, how does the government adjust for externalities? Remember, we said the problem about externalities is they're only factoring in the private benefits or the private costs, not the social benefits and the social costs. So if the government looks at positive externalities, things that are like really good, like we talk about your education, what does the government do? Well, the government subsidizes or you know, what a subsidi subsidy is, it's the act of the government giving money to it. So the government will subsidize or give money to things that create positive externalities because they want to encourage the more consumption and production of those things. Think about public education, like your school K through 12 is paid for because the government says, we don't want people that are uneducated running around. We want to educate them. We believe that this is a good thing. It creates a better society in the future. So we want to provide them with an education. At the same time, uh, on your taxes, you can actually do write-offs for things like driving or purchasing like an electric car. Or when you do your taxes, you can write off installing LED lights in your home rather than typical incandescent light bulbs that take up more energy. Like those are things because the government wants more of that. They want to provide incentive for people to do those things that create positive externalities. Now, at the same time, the government will tax or take money from things that create negative externalities, right? Because they kind of want to punish those things. They want to discourage them. Um, they put taxes on cigarettes. In Indiana, it's about 99 cents per pack a tax in order for a pack of cigarettes. 99 cents per pack in tax, in, in tax. We see that in states like New York, it's as high as $4.35 per pack in taxes alone because the government is trying to tax those things to discourage people from doing it to reduce those externalities, those negative externalities. We also see like eco taxes are placed on companies that pollute uh, in order or that companies have to pay to get licenses in order to have permission to pollute. It's kind of a weird thing. But the idea with that is, again, to discourage the production or consumption of these goods or services that produce negative externalities. So again, by taxing or subsidizing these externalities, the government is working to shift the production or the consumption to a more ideal or efficient level, closer to that equilibrium, so that we can eliminate or at least reduce the deadweight loss and therefore the market failure.